Hey, hello everyone, and thanks for joining us for Access City Council. I'm your host, City of Las Vegas Communications Director, David Riggleman. A popular park benefits from a huge Arbor Day celebration, and you may have noticed there are some major road projects underway in the Medical District and on Cheyenne. We have a special guest to tell us how long you'll be seeing orange and why all the dust will be worth it when the projects are completed. Here to talk about these stories and a whole lot more is our Mayor Pro Tem, who also represents Ward 1. You know who it is, Mr. Brian Knudsen. Hi, Brian. How are you? I'm fantastic. Happy to be here. It's good to have you back. A lot going on uh, since you've been on the program last time. A lot to talk about. It's always busy. <laughs> it is. It is. And as Mayor Pro Tem, it's, a, it's even a little busier for you. Mayor Pro Tem, obviously, when the mayor is unable to uh, be at an event or to take part in something, the Mayor Pro Tem steps in, chairs the meeting sometimes, if need be. And but she's always here. But she never leaves. I think she sleeps here in the office. It so, seems yeah, that way. It works it out seems Wait. But I, I know that she'll call on you from time to time. That's going to happen okay, for sure. Occasionally, yeah. <laughs> so, well, you represent Ward 1, as I said. You know that area very well. For those of you out there trying to figure out where exactly are they talking about, we'll go ahead and show you on the map. That area right there with the big one on it, appropriately, is Ward 1. It's where Las Vegas started. The Springs Preserve is, is in Ward 1. Uh, if you live in that area or work in that area, then, of course, you are in the city limits of the city of Las Vegas. If you're a resident, you're represented on the city council by Brian Knudsen. It's interesting ward because it runs really from the heart of the city, uh, just, just west of the downtown, all the way out to the northwest. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. So. Yeah, and I, it's my, my favorite way to describe it is I represent the richest of the rich that live in Nevada and the poorest of the poor and the folks that really built Las Vegas, union labor that settled kind of right in the heart of Las Vegas. Very diverse. So all, all kinds of people, and it's super fun to, to get to know all of them. Yeah, yeah and, and you have worked very hard to do that, to get to know those constituents. Well, I love when we get the community involved in things. And boy, case in point here, uh, Earth Day recently took place. We had Arbor Day tied in with that. And you had a couple of events, a couple of parks, Doc Romeo and a Dexter Park. And man, you really got the, 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 the community out to help clean up, plant trees, all kinds of stuff. So. Yeah, and there's hundreds of volunteers. There always is, especially when we're working with Get Outdoors Nevada. Yeah. So at Doc Romeo, that was actually sponsored by the city of Las Vegas and Marco Vallada uh, from our planning or community development department put it together with support from our parks and recreation and cultural affairs department with Get Outdoors Nevada. Uh, trees being planted, it was a really wow. great event. Uh, and they wrapped up by about 10.30 a.m., so lots of people there. Uh, and the week later, we were at Dexter Park. Wow. Uh, we had Get Outdoors Nevada again, cleaning up micro trash in the park. Um, lots of volunteers, lots of engagement in our community. It's just a, it's a great community, and people love being a part of it. That second picture, the last picture we saw, that was Dexter Park. That was it. That was a huge turnout of people. Was that like 100, 150 people? So that, oh, that one was Doc Romeo. Uh -huh. The second one was Dexter. Uh -huh. So yeah, like, I think there's about 150 wow. at Doc Romeo. Impressive. Uh, very organized group of people that came out and gave back. Uh, and then at, at Dexter, there was volunteers, just random volunteers. Um, there was the ROTC group that came uh -huh. out, uh, cleaning up micro trash, making it a a better world. Councilman, talk a little bit about that. You know, we use that phrase here, a micro trash. We, we have great grounds crews that, that work at the city. They do an excellent job, but they don't have the time to go through and get every little speck of this or that that gets left in the park. It's, it's gum wrappers, it's mm -hmm. cigarette butts, it's little pieces of trash. And so as stewards of our environment, it really is incumbent upon all of us to go out and pick that up. If it happens to blow away from you, then we have uh, our volunteers that go up and pick it up. And there, there's a lot of it, tons and tons of micro trash that eventually ends up into our wastewater system. Yeah. And so we want to make sure we get it up and put it where it belongs, which is you in think, the trash. You think, oh, it's just micro trash. There's, you know, it's just little stuff. But to your point, when you have volunteers go through and start picking all that up, it's amazing how much waste it generates. It all adds up. Yeah, it really does. So, well, kudos to everybody that got out. And thank you for helping clean up our parks again. Our city crews do a wonderful job, but to have that extra help, those extra set of hands in there to help uh, in the way of volunteers is just invaluable. So thanks, everybody. And also, May 13th, uh, that Saturday, you had uh, Art in the Park. How'd that go? That was fantastic. And April from my office really coordinated that with Clark County and Justin Jones' office. Ah. So it was a combined effort, city and county. We had dozens of vendors. Uh, that were there. We had hundreds of people walk through and find out information about the, the, the RTC, for example, about mm -hmm. the flood control district, for example. They had arts there. They had Metropolitan Police Department there. We had a DJ. There was wow. free food. So a really great event um, and really grateful for everyone who showed up and participated. Super fun. 
Rainbow Family Park, that's a great location for an art in the park. Now, is this going to be a traditional kind of thing that we're going to... We've tried, we've tried a couple of different art in the parks. We're trying to figure out what is the best day, what is the best mm -hmm. time. Rainbow Family is great because there's the ba baseball stadiums right, right there. Right. So you have the, the overflow from people who are or kids who are playing baseball and their families that come. Yeah, and they can um, but we, we may try different parks every now and then. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what is the best fit for the community. Rainbow yeah. Family has been a great, good, great park to do it at. We've done it twice there. We've done one at Bob Baskin, too. That's great. That was a big day. That was uh, the weekend we had uh, held Rado Parade, we had Art in the Park. It was it was a big weekend. Uh, Las Vegas birthday is May fifteenth, so yeah. all of that was in conjunction with the, the city's one hundred eighteenth birthday. Yeah, one eighteen. One eighteen. Yeah. So yeah, that's cool. I, I, those Art in the Park events are great. You know, there's always good food uh, <laughs> too. You know, it was, it was fun for me because I, when I was there, like I people that I just know from the community were randomly sh showing yeah. up and saying hi and, and they're like, oh, I ran into my neighbors here. Uh -huh. And that's great. Uh, people came from all over the valley just to, to come and to see what's going on. Yeah. yeah, exactly. A nice relaxing way to spend your day. And, and it maybe... was beautiful weather too. It was like, per it was a little bit warm in the sun, but uh -huh. perfect in the shade. I think May is a good time for that kind of stuff. Generally the weather is before we get into the, the, the doldrums of the summer, yes. but it's still generally not as windy as we see in March and April. We're so. getting into that time of the year where everyone's yeah. going to be hiding from each other for a couple of months anyway. <laughs> exactly, not getting into the air conditioning for sure. And then, Councilman, I, I, I love this. You know, you are a city staffer formally and before you were elected to the city council. So you know the organization well, but it's impossible to know every nook and cranny. And I was impressed because you did a ride along at station one, one fire on station 103. I did. And how was this? Uh, it was it was fantastic. So myself and several other elected officials from the city, the county, the state are working on a crisis response system. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and so I've been trying to spend as much time with first responders as I can to better understand how we can evolve our existing crisis systems. Uh, so Station 103 did a great job showing me around. They let me uh, play with the water hoses. <laughs> they were doing some training and I got to, to train with them. Uh, had a couple of medical calls, had a couple of um, um, opportunities to sit down and talk with the paramedics about what's going on, what's what's their day-to-day -day look like, and how are they dealing with uh, the amount of mental health issues. And that, re that really is the, the, the focus. bulk of mm -hmm. what's happening within our first responder systems right now. So uh, I've been able to spend some time with Metro, with our marshals, with the fire department, with hospitals, to say how can how can we make this better because right. it, it is an overwhelming issue that we're dealing with right now. Councilman talked a little bit about that. We've seen uh, a number of first responders even here in Southern Nevada. Um, many suffer from PTSD, depression. Some have taken their own lives. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult. And Councilwoman Alan Polensky has really taken the charge in Southern Nevada, organizing groups of people around how we as elected officials, as leaders, can provide a safer, healthier environment for first responders. Um, so kudos to her because she hit the ground running. She, today was her fourth or fifth meeting organizing dozens of leaders in our community to say how can we be better. Um, and so um, i really, really proud of this council right now because we, we are taking the charge and leading I think much of what's happening in Southern Nevada and what will make it better. Right. First responders, uh, they see things every day that most of us can't even imagine and they deal with it day after day after day after day. and it can take its toll in time. And I think that's what we're trying to address. If you talk to them, they have ideas about how it can be better. So that's, we got to spend time with them to understand how, how the world can be better tomorrow. Councilman, or Mayor Mar Pro Tem, how, what are some of the solutions? What are some of the things that you're hearing that, that we, we could improve on that would help help so, these, these first responders deal with this, this, this stress. So improvements are coming. So it's one of the things that I talk about, it's an example, uh, and it's an example only, but multiple times in my, in my ward, in my area, I'll be having a coffee at, at, a, at a coffee shop like Starbucks, um, and you'll see that person who wanders in off the street and bangs on the window um, or knocks a bunch of things down, and you know there's something wrong. You know there's, there's something that's not right in that right. person's life at that point in time. Um, right now, our only solution for that is to call 911. That, that's all we're doing. We're calling 311 or 911. A police officer responds. They'll generally take that person into custody because they don't know what else to do with that person. Now that person might just need a, to sleep it off. Uh, that person might need mental health counseling. They might need to get back on medications. None of those things are, are really what a law enforcement officer should be doing. Um, so if it's something medical, we'll call for a fire department, and both our fire department and our police officers are responding to people who don't necessarily need to be in an emergency room or in jail. Mm -hmm. What they need is 
they need to sleep it off. They need to uh, get on the appropriate medications. They need to get uh, acquainted with support services within our community. Um, and so that's what my experience is telling me is that our, our 911 responders are being overwhelmed by the amount of, yeah. of calls that are not real public safety emergencies. Um, they're people who need help. And that's what we're working on is developing a system that can support them and free up law enforcement, free up first responders like uh, firefighters, free up our ERs. Uh, so they can deal with real emergencies. Yeah, and take some of that pressure too of the constant call, 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 uh, yes. uh, take some of that stress away. So, well, it's an important topic. Good luck with all that. You have to keep us updated in the future on the show. I guarantee it's, you yeah, it's, it's a regular topic we, for me. We will talk about it. I, I think uh, me and everyone watching is very interested for sure. Councilman, you have, uh, Mayor Pro Tem, you have some events coming up. We want to talk about this. is very cool. Brews with Brian. We love Brews with Brian. This is either coffee or this is a coffee Brews with Brian. This, is, this one's a coffee one. Okay, okay. Every other month is coffee, and then the, <laughs> the alternating months are, are something more adult. Uh, so so the, the coffee one is at Bronze Cafe, which is on Buffalo well, I Drive. I love Bronze Cafe. It's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, the point of it is is to get new people out. Generally, I have some regulars that come uh, every time. And, Excellent. Uh, let, they just get their, their ideas out there, their thoughts out there. They get to complain too. Um, get all, get, get it all out that. there. We, we hear a little of that. My, my job is to absorb it all, and I take it all in and try to do uh, the best that I can with the information that I have. But if you don't say anything, then I never know. So I always encourage people: get it all off your chest. Tell me what you're thinking, uh, and then I'm pretty direct about what the city can do, what the city can't do, um, and what what my abilities are yeah. as a council person. One of your uh, predecessors is Mayor Pro Tem Gary Reese used to yeah. say: uh, "If you don't tell me what's going on, shame on you." If you tell me and I don't do anything about it, then shame on me. You know, that's, so that's you got to tell. Exactly, us. It. you got to tell, tell me us. what you're thinking. Exactly. So again, that's uh, Bruce with Brian, uh, May 27th from uh, 10 to 11:30, Bronze Cafe there on uh, Buffalo, Buffalo near uh, Smoke Ranch, right? Yep. And uh, your ward extends all the way out there these days. It's, it's amazing. It's all the way yeah, out there. So that's and I've only been exactly. out there for about six months. So I have to learn 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 new things you new will. people. You're a very fast learner. I know that. Yeah. Uh, and then this is very important. Uh, we have a safe key hiring event. This is really key because we need a lot of safe key employees, uh, especially during the seasonal times of the year. But uh, this is, uh, there are going to be two hiring events, Wednesday, June 21st and Tuesday, June 20th, uh, where you can get out there. And if you're interested in being part of that program, we want to hear from you because um, we need to fill those positions. It's a great so. way to earn some extra money. It's a great way to have some fun with, with children in the city of Las Vegas schools. And if you're looking for an opportunity to hone in on some skills of classroom management, and hopefully you become a teacher too, because exactly. we need a lot more teachers out there. We do. That's going to take place at our uh, Human Resources Operations uh, location. That's 833 Las Vegas Boulevard North. That's going to go from 830 to 4 each day. Again, June 20 and 21. Come on out if you're interested, and we also need lifeguards too. So if, if you, we better have lifeguards by now. Yeah, you know. So uh, we need them too. We're always looking for lifeguards. I was going to volunteer if they didn't have one. I, I can know. stand there just to the kiddie pool, though. I can stand there and get a nice tan for the summer. <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be perfect. <laughs> Well, Councilman, uh, we need to take a short break right here, but when we return, uh, we have a special guest with us from the city's Public Works Department. Deputy Director Rosa Cortez has a progress report on two very big road improvement projects that are going on right now in Ward 1. You'll find out what's going on. Please stay with us. It's right after this. You want a great rideshare experience? Don't ride with us. But if you drive after drinking or consuming cannabis, this is the ride you're going to get. Plan a ride, or we'll pick you up. Paid for by the Nevada Departments of Public Safety and Transportation. Welcome back, everyone. You may have noticed a couple of big road improvement and infrastructure projects going on in our neck of the woods out there. One in Ward 1 in the Medical District, the other just off of Cheyenne near 95. That's also Ward 1 these days. With us to talk about those projects, what to expect when they're done, and much more is our deputy director from the city's public works department. It's Rosa Cortez. Rosa, always a pleasure to have you on because you are the lady in the know when it comes to what's going on on our on our projects in the city. You got a handle on all of it, Councilman. I know this is a question you get all the time. What's, what's when's that stuff going to get done? Yeah, they're, they're not they're not questions so much as statements right, yelling at me right, to get right, it done as quickly right. as possible. As you as so, you well know, I, I've gotten the habit of saying every orange cone equals several 
wonderful jobs there out go. there. So Southern Nevada's economy is booming right now because we have amazing people in public works that are providing federal funding and uh, city funding to make sure that we have a better infrastructure and well-paid jobs out there. So that, I start with that, and it's painful. It's incredibly painful, especially around the medical district area, out on Cheyenne, very painful. Um, construction projects, but here's what's interesting for me, is there's black tubes that are going up and down Rancho, black tubes up and down Cheyenne, um, and so everyone's saying the construction's awful, and I've gotten in the habit of saying that's not that's not actually the construction; it's sewer that's underground, and it's still awful. And so I thought it'd be helpful to talk about the difference between the sewer and what those black pipes are, because mm -hmm. that's been interesting for me. Uh, and then the construction timeline. And I'll turn it over to Rosa because she's an engineer, and she knows all these projects. She knows them like the back of her hand. It's and like this is what's going on here, here, and here. Rose, Rosa's been in neighborhood meetings with me, and I'll start off by saying I am not an engineer. <laughs> I can talk about a million different things, but this is something I cannot talk about. So I'll just Let's turn it over to Rosa. We got the expert here. Rosa, take it away. Let's start with the the work over in the Rancho area there, Rancho Charleston. Start sure. Charleston, yeah. Sure, thanks, and thanks for having me today. So Charleston in the medical district is a project from MLK to Rancho, and it also included a sewer rehabilitation piece along Rancho from Oki to Pinto. Uh -huh. And so the black pipes that you're referring to are the bypass lines. And so the first step in trying to rehab a, a sewer line uh -huh. is to dry out the existing line underground and bypass all the flows to the surface. So that's what the black pipes are. It's the, it's the temporary bypass while you work on the, on the main line. Gotcha. Correct. It so, sounds disgusting. Like it's, it's absolutely disgusting, but, but so fascinating if you're mm -hmm. like, if you're interested in like what's going on around you, like it's right. It's obviously works too. It's it keeps everything. You can work on the one while the other still functions. Correct. So, yeah. Correct. So everyone's still in service. Everyone can still flush the toilets. Thank God. Correct. <laughs> As you're driving down Rancho, like don't get mad at the world around you. Like just these black pipes. Think of everything they're doing. It's very yes, fascinating to me. Still functioning. Exactly. And so that piece of the project is actually coming to an end now. We we finished wow. doing the relining. And the contractor is getting ready to um, remove those lines and get those uh, bypass out of the street. Wow. And so Rancho will uh, be cleared up and focus on the Charleston piece now, the roadway improvements gotcha. for Charleston to put in all the new sidewalks. Time frame for each Rosa Rancho so and then Charleston? The Rancho sewer rehab piece should be cleared out by the Memorial Day weekend. Wow. They started cleaning it up Coming this right morning, up. I, yeah. I noticed, because I, yeah. I drive Rancho every single day. So in the next couple of weeks, Ex it should excellent. be all picked up. And then the... Charleston, tell us what's going yeah, on there. Yeah, so on Charleston Boulevard, they've already started. Um, they removed the medians, you know, to try to redirect the traffic flow because they're working on the north side of the street to start the utility work. Mm -hmm. And the first um, item of business is the water line. Mm -hmm. So they'll start installing that water line. And then they'll continue after they finish with all the undergrounding with the surface improvements. So the sidewalks will be removed, the curb and gutters. Wow, the, it's a big project. It's a big yeah, job, yeah, yeah. Uh, new pavement. It'll be a really beautiful project when with, it's all said with done, new yeah. medians, new trees and streetscapes. The bus turnouts that we have included have the new medical district uh, design. Oh, excellent. And we're looking forward to it. It's going to be great. What's the so time frame on that? I know Councilman gets this question. So yes. when's it going to be done? Charleston mm -hmm. will be done by September of 2024. Okay. So, so we'll when people complain to me, what I say is you should drive down Shadow between Charleston and Alta, and that's kind of what it's going to look like. Uh, and it's beautiful. It and is. Then it's very nice. They complain for a long time. And I say, just drive down there and then tell me what you think. And they say, it's amazing and wonderful. And I can't wait for Charleston and then Rancho to look that way, too. It will. So just, just patience. It's just a couple of years. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it, it, it's less than that now. It's like next year, we can say. Correct. Next. For Charleston. Correct. But then, there, then there's Rancho. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> then there's the other Rancho. But yeah, and Shadow Lane and Pinto are like examples of what they'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they're nice. They're it's wonderful. Great. And if you're a runner, if you run down, it's, it's a lot of fun because the sidewalks are big. Yeah, yeah. There's trees on there. The lap, We've talked the, about that. The yeah. lights are nice. Right. I'm very excited because I, I cool. like to run. And then your ward councilman, as we were talking about earlier, goes all the way out into the northwest. So the project on Cheyenne, which you always yes. think, well, that must be ward four. That must be ward six. Mm -hmm. No, it's ward one now. Um, a lot of work on yes. Cheyenne, and boy, we've gotten an earful uh, about the work on Cheyenne yes. Roses. So to make it personal, us, my, my husband lives on <laughs> Cheyenne, and we live on Rancho, so our entire lives are under construction right now. So 
I, I feel it. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell them how, how it is. So the project on Cheyenne Avenue is another sewer uh, project that we have. And actually, this particular project is the third phase of a three-part project. That, so it's the last one. It's the last yes. phase, and we're very excited. And what it'll do is it'll provide increased capacity and and help the deterioration of the pipe that we had noticed back in 2015. And so sure. the first phase of that was 2015. It was right off of the um, Durango Hills Water Reclamation. I remember that. From, I, I recall at Cheyenne the and Rampart. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we did that piece first. Then we did the downstream piece from Decatur to about Torrey Pines. Mm -hmm. And now this is the last the piece last that part. connects Torrey <sighs> all the way to Buffalo. And same um, type of method that bypass lines are in the street. Right, right. Uh, for this particular project, it is open cut, so you do see the trench is open, and we're putting in a, a bigger pipe in the ground. Mm. So, Rosa, how time frame on this one? To this one should be done by this summer of 2023. Wow, that's right around the corner. So, Cheyenne, you can drive on it again, everyone. <laughs> so, David, I get, I get asked almost daily now about like why are we doing this? Right. I know uh, and you do. So, so yeah. my response is, is we live in the oldest part of Southern Nevada, and just like your house, as things start falling apart, your plumbing starts going out, your yep. electric starts going out, you start replacing pieces and parts. It's kind of the same thing as I as I kind of talk about it, is this is pieces and parts. Um, what's nice is these are really big stretches, so we won't see a lot of construction when it's when it's. That done. is a great point. That is a great point. And when I did a fire ride along, fire ride along a couple of weeks ago that we just talked about, mm -hmm. so as we're going along, uh, that we noticed out of the fire truck, there's water bubbling out of the street, just bubbling. And I've seen that now three times in Ward 1, just water bubbling out. It ends up being there's a, a break in the sewer line, and so you have water bubbling out of the street. There's breaks that are happening all over. This helps to fix some of those things. Wow. So we're, we're preparing for the future and the, the sustainability of Southern Nevada by doing these projects. Right. Wow. Yes, we have a great team that plans and looks ahead at our sewer systems. And just to determine that, to look ahead and be ahead of that. Yeah. Rosa, those are big projects. What else you got going on in Ward 1 know, that we, we need lot. to know There's about? There's a lot going on oh, in Ward yeah. 1. There yeah. is. Um, one other project I want to touch on in the medical district mm. is the Rancho actual roadway reconstruction project. Ah, that okay. one is a two-mile project. It goes from Mesquite to Sahara. Wow. Yes. That's a, that's a long run. That's a long run, and it's a pretty amazing project. It has a lot of elements to it. We are working with the uh, power company, MV Energy, mm -hmm. to underground the uh, overhead. Yeah. Um, a long rancho, and um, with that, we are also reconstructing the pavement section in rancho. We're adding wider sidewalks mm -hmm. um, to uh, certain pieces of rancho, some um, on the east side of rancho from, say, Sahara to Oki, and then on the west side from Oki to Charleston. Wow. And we're adding new trees, new street lighting. We're adding some lantern lighting for this um, area of Rancho where there are a lot of um, historical neighborhoods yeah, that sure. are in Ward 1 in that corridor. Rosa, how far of a run is that? That's a, that's, 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 that's a, that's a long it's distance. Two miles. Two, 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 two I, miles. I would know yeah. from my pedometer. I know exactly yeah. how long it is. Because <laughs> you're always out running there. So and I'll it's going to be a nice place to run when it's, all, it's, it, when it's all said and done, for sure. On the other side of Public Works um, with Joey Paskey and Traffic Engineering, because we've talked a lot with Joey on the show, those other older historic neighborhoods are experiencing a lot of traffic and different kinds of traffic because of the construction. And so we have an active neighborhood uh, traffic survey going on in Glen Heather right now. Mm -hmm. We have an active neighborhood survey in McNeil Estates. Um, and so this is our way as a city is trying to make sure that whatever precaution for traffic safety is possible that, that, that we're aware of it and setting aside funding for it. Yeah. So whether it be stop signs or speed humps or, or historic markers that we've talked about before, trying to do everything we can to make sure those neighborhoods are safe and protected. That's great, that's great. It's a great project, lots going on. And then we're doing to do the pedestrian crossing, you know, north of Charleston where the Starbucks and mm -hmm. the Smith Shopping Center is. Yes, 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 yes. Where the Bank of America, uh, a lot of folks from the medical district or the bank Trying to cross, cross there, and yeah. run across, so there'll be so, a good, safe pedestrian crossing. Really? Yeah, no, it's surface, oh, it's be but surface you know, it'll okay. have the flashing, the rapid uh, flashing beacon there, and. Um, and Dave, we've talked about before that that's the city's investment into the medical district. The private sector investment is also going to bring cones <laughs> through their permitting. Um, but you see UMC has a complete blanket across it right now oh, because yeah. UMC is under construction. Just yesterday at our council meeting, um, we approved a hotel, a 
parking structure and 100,000 square feet of medical office space. Yeah. That'll be there on Wellness and Shadow Way. Um, and then uh, in addition, across the street there, there'll be a women's cancer center that goes under construction soon. And a block away, there'll be an apartment complex that goes under construction. So wow. there's an enormous amount of investment into the Southern Nevada economy. And that's my very favorite way to talk about it. I know there's a lot we of homes creating, out there, we're, but we're creating jobs. A people. lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. A lot of jobs. Wow. Rose, we just have a few minutes left here. Anything else you want to throw into the mix? Uh, uh, we could just talk about one last little project. It's uh, two intersection improvements we have at Lake oh. Mead and Jones and Charleston and Torrey Pines. Mm -hmm. We're installing some bus turnouts oh, and right turn lanes um, at a very much needed intersection. Um, Charleston Torrey Pines is where the CSN campus is at. Mm, right. And there's nothing worse than you're coming along and, and a bus and a lot of people getting on and off the bus right. and you're just going to sit, you know, yeah, so if they so can turn out, great. Correct. Mm -hmm. And then Lake Mead and Jones, we have like the Walgreens and the apartments and um, the new commercial center that's on the northwest corner that mm -hmm. we built at. So yeah, that's uh, all coming along. Yeah, and the, the RTC projects, because I sit on the RTC yeah. board, I just came too. from an RTC meeting that was a lot of fun. Um, we'll have the BRT, the bus rapid transit that goes down Maryland yes. Parkway yes, yes. and wraps up into the medical district. And we'll also have GOMED, which is going to be a, a automated driverless car. Uh, that circles around the medical district and goes into the Bonneville Transit Center. Uh -huh. So enormous amount of change. It's hard for, for folks to adapt to that much change that quickly. Um, but a couple of years from now, it, it'll be like it, nothing. It, yeah. It'll just it'll be, be an be amazing new part of our community. The oldest part of our community turns into the newest part of our community. Well, I'm impressed that you and you uh, are, have got all of this, uh, you know, at the top of mind. You, you guys can sort it all out. It's, it's uh, that's a lot of that's a lot of projects. So, folks, if you may want to rewind this and watch it again just to take it all in. But that was good stuff. Uh, kudos to you and Rosa. Thanks so much Thank for you. staying on top of all these projects. It's fascinating how many projects that you and your team oversee all at one time. It's a lot. Of course, this is just Ward 1 we're talking about. They've got stuff going on all across the city. That is a lot, a lot to keep track of. So kudos to you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. And uh, Rosa, Councilman, we want to tell everybody out there, you know, we're about out of time, but we want to say we always want to hear from you. It's one of the things Councilman wants to do. He, he wants to hear what you have to say. So if you have something that you want to tell him, you can always reach out to Councilman Knutes, and you can find him on Facebook and Twitter, of course. But you can also contact him by picking up the phone. We still do that around here, 702-229-6405. Or send him an email. His address is bknutson at lasvegasnevada.gov. And here, one of his great staff get right back to you. You've got April, you've got Dorian, you've got Caitlin right now, and um, yeah, it's a great team. And Maria had a baby. Maria had a baby. She'll be back soon. We miss you, Maria, if you're watching. So Nine pounds, little boy Nico. Yeah, Nico. brought the kids to meet him. Yeah, and uh, she's doing well, and uh, like I said, we miss you, Maria. Come back soon. So, uh, not, but Caitlin's not doing a great job, but, but, you know, Maria, you're part of the team, too, so. Rose Cortez, thank you so much. Great job. Uh, thank you. Good thank luck you. out there. I have to have you back in the future with an update on how things are going. Sure. And Councilman, I'll have you back in six weeks with another update, Mayor Pro Tem. I'll be here. On uh, what's going on in Ward 1, and uh, it'll be just as full of show as this has been. <laughs> so More cones. Exactly. <laughs> For a while. Exactly. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you, Count Mayor Pro Tem. And everyone, don't miss our next show beginning on June 1st with Ward 3 City Councilwoman Olivia Diaz. You can now catch all of our KCLV shows on Apple TV, Roku, and Amazon Fire. And watch for our QR code during the closing credits of this show to subscribe to our newsletter. And don't forget, you can watch us live on the internet at kclv.tv. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next time around.